G'day folks, just going to answer some questions about Tomahawk fighting. For those of you who have done the Special Forces Tomahawk fighting course that I've put together many, many years ago now, there's been a lot of questions come up in terms of some of the, some of the nuances that I'd like to clarify over the course of a few videos like this. The one I want to talk about today is there seems to be a misunderstanding in terms of the application of the kinetic force that's this stuff into target that people are missing there's two forms of kinetic energy transfer to target from the head of the weapon into the target the first one of those I want to talk about is a simple one it's called a chop okay now combative tomahawks have this curved blade here because it also allows them to do a slash, chop and slash, chop and slash. Okay. Work with me, we've got some wind here today. Lots of it. So if you look at the blade here, that curve action there, that curve design and shape, this is the beard down at this end, this comes in in a slashing motion. This allows the wielder to slash so that is to almost glance across a target boom, boom, boom. so it's just double-handed or single-handed it doesn't matter it's not biting in at 90 degrees to the impact surface so it's glancing across and that's going to create a whole stack of damage there because it's basically cutting like a sword yeah the second one is what people more generally probably associate with an axe which is the full-on going down this line now through the horizontal head of the weapon more blunt force trauma and it's more of a impact at 90 degrees impact at 90 degrees now because of the nature of combat and I'll be clear here I have never had to hit anyone with a tomahawk very 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 few people in this modern day have and aren't we gracious and graceful for that right so all that experts out there you have no more expertise than anyone else me included we're all talking in the space of theory with these things all right so but we can look at the theory of other weapon systems and other battle experience to make sense of how this is going to be used this is an interest area it's a theoretical concept construct so before you get yourself all worked up into a angst of crit criticism is what i'm saying just take a chill pill and think about the dynamics of the weapon itself All right. so the chop then is what most people associate with this for those who don't understand that combative dynamic I'm just alluding to there it's that the target doesn't stay still it doesn't hang about there going hit me exactly where you want me to hit me that just doesn't happen battle whether it's one-on-one -on -one or it's in a larger scale is a mobile and fluid environment All right, so this thing is a hanging pole and we use that to train because the distance and range changes continuously and yes there's a certain level of predictability in it sorry that's just the way life is with training modalities we have to deal with what we can make our training as realistic as we can but understand also at the end point what we're trying to learn from that train so if I'm now chopping in at 90 degrees there's a high propensity for this type of weapon to be embedded in the target so I need to then develop systems to release that and it has to come back out along the axis a little bit of leverage this way maybe but remember this target if it's a living creature which is would be unfortunate is not going to be as resistant to my leverage to allow me to withdraw the weapon so we need to be versatile and flexible in that space as we should in every dynamic of life let alone training for battle when I glance I'm got to have the timing more precise because I want it to brush across the target Boom. brush across the target brush across the target brush across the target not embed but I need to work with both potentials sometimes the target moves, I move, I misjudge, there's, there's the fog of battle, I need to be able to quickly move to something else. 
not be sat there in a place of pause going, didn't expect that. Yeah? Irrespective of the shape of this head, okay, these are small, that's about two inches. When you get something like this spike in, which is probably more for a breaching and general tool purpose than combat, but of course anything can be used that way, it's up to the user, but this is going to be more likely to stick, yeah? but less surface area to, to hold. Yeah? But if it goes between the ribs of an animal or someone, that's going to purchase and stay there. You're going to have to work hard to get that out. Now, in the Tomahawk fighting course that I filmed many years ago, I emphasized very, very, very heavily, there's an entire lecture on it, about weapon retention. Weapon retention pertains to having a secondary weapon, like a system of support, so that when this has become embedded in an, in an opponent, or an opponent grabs onto this thing, I have a method, usually a secondary knife or something, I can draw quickly with either hand, encourage this person to let go, and then retract. It doesn't matter what weapon system we are dealing with, handgun to razor blade, it's the same principle. You must have a weapon retention concept built into your training methodology. Otherwise, you're at wafer thin level. You're at Hollywood space. You are just playing around and doing some stuff in a dojo. Right? Real battle, real combat, real fights get very messy, very, very yucky, unpredictable, very fast, very dynamic, and there's a lot of adrenal influence on both combatants. So that means things get clunky. Things get clunky, mental acuity gets reduced, and we're very much into bashing each other quite thug-like. Right? So if that makes sense, you'll understand why we need to build into our training systems different ways of dealing with the uncertainties that are bound to manifest regardless of what weapon system I'm playing with. Okay? Remember, this is an extrapolation of theory from another dynamic where I have real experience in combat to a theoretical weapon system. And whilst the dynamics are fairly easy to understand, we don't want to get caught up in this thing of, I'm speaking from a place of absolute authority, I've whacked someone with one of these things and I know what's gonna happen. That all said, you'll notice in that vi video course that we've done already, I'm a big advocate of simplicity. We don't want to be doing complex kind of like hooking here and trapping here and this weapon system allows that it encourages that it has the potential with this bearded hook and this lever here to hook things up yeah. but it's not a primary concept at the end of the day this is a decent piece of steel whatever target it hits it's doing a decent amount of damage none of us are superhuman one hit down you go that's it. We don't have to do more than one slash. He's not going down. Okay? We often live in a false reality in training, particularly in martial arts, where we spend a lot of time going, okay, this comes there, and I block this, and I block that, and I'm boom, 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 bam, and I'm doing all this fancy stuff, and wow, isn't that cool? Great. As long as you keep them in the right box, that is useful to be adaptable in the flow of battle. It is not how we intend to pursue that battle. Right, so there you go, there's a couple of points there. There's a lot of a lot of information on the course that I've already filmed. Got a gale going here. That course is a bit dated. Obviously, my training never stops. Yours shouldn't either. And what I learn each day I train builds on what I learned previously. So the line in the sand that I drew when I filmed that course originally was the line in the sand probably four, five, six years ago now. Things continue on. We continue to learn new concepts, research into other areas of the battle space and derive new theory, put that theory under the pressure test to see how that's going to fold up and then roll with it from that point. Is it useful? Yes. It can stay for a while. If it's not, don't waste time with it. Let it go. Have the maturity in your training, whatever that discipline is, to let things go. If it's not useful, 
let it go. The more you hang on to preconceived idea, the more you're going to try and plan out an individual fight, be it for self-defense or something else, and you're going to be stuck in the paradigm of one-two thinking. If you don't know what one-two thinking is, it means the, the message communication system that goes from brain, so input from the external environment through my brain to analysis to decision down to action in the muscles that are controlling the weapon system. One, two, as opposed to just reacting. Now, I had a guy make some comments quite some time ago on the one of the videos on, on tomahawk fighting who was unable to understand that I can't drill a fight. Drill is not for combat. Drill is to learn the biomechanics of what we're trying to understand here. Drill is for biomechanical assimilation. Okay, it's teaching my body to move in battle, in a real struggle for life, death, and limb. I don't have time to one two the situation. That's already done. We use mature levels of situational awareness to create understanding of the environment that I'm in. And if you know me at all, some of you do, some of you don't. We make every effort to negotiate and remove ourselves from that hostile encounter. It's only at the point of negotiation has failed, attack is imminent, self-defense is required, that we are talking in the space. We don't go out looking for trouble with anything. That is an immature, unenlightened point of view. If you're needing to prove yourself to, in every encounter, you've got a long way still to walk on the path. Right? We don't need to prove anything. That all said, we can train realistically. We can train with situational awareness that allow us to detect motion, movement, intent, and aggression in an opponent when it is appropriate to do so, and react instantly. Done. Fight's over. Yeah? So I don't need 400 different angles of attack. That is drill training my biomechanics. My mind is switched off. In the Japanese systems, they'll spend a lot of time studying, we call that mushin. No mind. No mind. That means I don't plan out the attack. I don't plan out my counter. I don't plan out their attack. I don't try and anticipate. I just position and what comes, comes. Finished. Okay. So I don't have to worry about trying to figure out what might be facing me. The, the, the problem is the guy or the girl in that headspace there. That's the danger. But they're a human being just like me. Same fears, same adrenal system, same physical capabilities. A lot in that lecture. Probably a lot more than I was going to share originally, but I hopefully allow you to sort of get some dwell time on those key points and just get some reality about what's going on. There's a lot of junk floating around, a lot of junk, and I'm certainly no say what do you call it, sage-like guru on the subject, as I've hopefully already indicated to you. We're all students. We're all students for life. We're all students on a journey of forever trying to impress upon ourselves the need to train diligently, to train authentically, to train with reality, but also to train at a very spiritual level. If I'm just training this system, for example, and this one's classic, and that's why I chose this to do the entire online course, Special Forces Tomahawk Fighting, is because I knew this would attract attention to those that need a little bit of spiritual development, i.e., those that think oh, I'm just gonna bash them on and really hurt them. That kind of thuggery is old energy. It needs to go. It doesn't mean we dispense with the ability to be violent, but we be violent only on very, very, very specific occasions. And we train through the biomechanical actions of a weapon system or our, our body to polish our soul. So just because we can use violence doesn't mean we should, and it certainly doesn't mean that I'm a thug by nature. A little bit of wildness is nice, but 
we don't have to be just a brutal thug. There's a whole can of worms for you guys to digest out there. See you next time. I'll learn how to turn this thing off one day. One day.